What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today on the 10th of July in terms of my trades, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I personally see potential in, and that I want to trade here in the month of July in 2019. So without further ado guys, let's just hop right into the topic of today's video if you do enjoy this video find value in it go down below hit that like button subscribe if you do want to see further content for me and let's just get right into it guys so today the S&P 500 hit an all-time high at three thousand and two dollars and ninety eight cents at the close of the market it was up thirteen dollars and forty four cents up point four five the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up $76 today, $76.71 at the close, up 0.29%. And this also hit an all-time high today at $26,983.45. The NASDAQ today, guys, up 81 points, up 1.04%. And an all-time high was hit nearly at $8,000 at $79.49. Point five on the dot. So today, guys, I'm sure a lot of you already know about this, but there was a Fed meeting this morning where Powell, Jerome Powell, the Federal Reserve Chairman, he pretty much hinted to a rate cut, uh, you know, increasing chances of a rate cut in the meeting here towards the end of, the, of July through uh, the 30th and the 31st of July. And obviously right now, guys, you know, the markets, like I've been saying in these videos, they've been pricing in the rate cut like absolute crazy, right? If we go on the S&P 500 here, you guys remember we sold off in the whole month of May. You guys can clearly see it here. And then once we got that news of a potential rate cut, it was literally, you know, I forget how the news came about, but it wasn't even confirmed from Powell. The, the markets, you know, the, the markets went like crazy. The markets took this as a sign of optimism in a time when the markets needed that optimism and then boom, the markets exploded in the month of June, as you guys can see, you know, from 2736, the S&P, you know, the, the, you know, the, the rally has, hasn't even stopped yet, right? From 2730 all the way up to $3,002, which is absolutely crazy, guys. The S&P has hit a milestone, you know, hitting these $3,000, you know, ranges here. So, that's pretty much why the markets, you know, gapped up this morning, hit all-time highs because we just got further, you know, further, um, um, what's the word? you know, further validation that we are most likely going to be getting a 25 basis point rate cut here towards the end of July. And if we take a look at technicals here, guys, on the SPX, very good technicals um, for a bull run here for the continuation of a bull run and for the continuation of this uptrend. And let me explain why. So we talked about yesterday, you know, on and, and all of these videos, honestly, these market update videos on the one year, one day for the SPX. S&P, you know, we're holding over an old resistance as a new support right now, pretty much with the pop that we saw today, guys. Very good sign here because we pulled back, we retested this old resistance as a new support, and we popped up and we also broke out of the of the wedge that we were trading in and that I talked about in yesterday's video, right? You guys remember this wedge that we were in? I bet you can see it better on um, this 10-day chart. We were trading in this wedge, and I said, said, you know, if we break out of it, that's going to be a very bullish run or move rather. That's going to be a sign that S&P could continue its run. And what happened, guys? We broke out and we hit an all time high yet again. And if we were to break to the downside, that would be a pretty bearish move. That would be a break of pattern. And we could see more red at that point. That obviously didn't happen, right? So that's a pretty good sign. The fact that we broke out of that wedge to the upside on the 20 day one hour here. Notice how the 50 SMA has, is still acting as a support. We pretty much bounced on it this morning as we popped out of that wedge. That is looking good. The uptrend is still intact. This is honestly a textbook beautiful um, uptrend here. Nothing is really 
you know, pointing to us selling off here. And honestly, the next spot that I'm seeing the S&P and want the S&P to hold is above this level here at about 29.90 to about 29.95. And that just happens to be, you know, a resistance spot from a couple of days ago. So ideally here, maybe we pull back, re we retest that 50 SMA, but ideally, you know, if we continue this uptrend, which I think at this point, we will continue this uptrend up until, you know, July when we get that rate cut. I think the markets are going to continue to rally. What happens after that, guys? I'm not too sure quite yet. No one really knows, but speculation here, I think, will run up until that rate cut. And from there, the markets... I don't know. We'll see what happens after that, but at least the rest of July, I expect that run. And hey, we might pull back. We retest this level, pop, break above 3,000 again. And at that point, I would like to see the S&P hold 2950, 29, or rather 2995, 2990, and 3000. I would like that level to be held as a new support. So that's kind of the breakdown there on the uh, uh, S&P 500, the Dow Jones. You guys can clearly see here we broke out of the wedge again, uh, just like the S&P rather. Um, not again because there wasn't a wedge before, but the wedge that we drew in yesterday's video and the previous video, um, you know, we were able to uh, break out out of that to the upside, right? Very, very bullish move there. We're trending above the 50 SMA here on the 10-day, 30-minute chart, holding that level as a support. That is looking pretty good. The 20-day, one hour here, you guys can see again, we broke out of that wet SMA again, hit that higher high, and now we're holding that 50 SMA as a support, which has been a support over these past couple of weeks. That's a very good sign as well, and everything that I'm seeing here, you know, is pointing to further upwards momentum for the Dow Jones. And like the S&P, we talked about 29.95, that old resistance needs to be held as a support in the next couple of days. And that level on the Dow is going to be around 26.8. 50 right around here you guys can see that was a resistance back on the 21st of June back on the 1st of July we broke above it a little bit we failed to hold it as a support making it a resistance again and now you guys can see if I extend the trend line a bit you know we're literally right on top of that level right now so ideally here guys tomorrow I would love to see a hold above this level which would honestly hold us above the 50 SMA as well and from there we could continue the uptrend Trend. And who knows, guys, we may be getting into the 27,000 territory, 27,200, 27,250. That would be nice on the Dow if we hold those levels. And overall, you guys can clearly see we are holding old resistances now as new supports on the Dow. We just need to see, obviously, if this upswing is going to continue. And I do expect the markets to continue to run here, at least in the short term, up until we get that 20 25 uh, basis point rate cut, which Jerome Powell really hinted to today, um, you know, earlier on in the day. So the NASDAQ today, guys, did very well up 1%, like we said in the beginning of the video. I don't know if you guys can see this because my face is down here, but tech stocks green throughout the board, or at least the main ones that I personally follow, including um, Netflix, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Apple. They were up all good today, and Apple is actually actually the stock that I profited on today and I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes here and for those of you guys that remember I bought Apple yesterday and it was an overnight swing trade but I don't want to get there quite yet give me a couple minutes guys I will get to that but the Nasdaq here very uh, similar to the Dow and the S&P we're at all-time highs now and we're looking to hold those old resistance levels um, from the past year as you guys can see here on the one year one day we're looking to hold those levels as new support levels right this level here we clearly broke above it. We broke above 7850, 7900. Now we're in the 7950 range. Now we need to pull back, guys, retest this level for the uptrend to continue, in my personal opinion. So, hopping here to the 20 day, one hour, you guys can see we completely popped above the 50 SMA today. We're out of that wedge. Very bullish move here on the NQ. We hit that higher high. Everything is looking like the uptrend is still intact. So, 
So, guys, markets right now, they're extremely, extremely, extremely bullish, right? VIX is down a dollar and six. That's the volatility index. And the VIX right now, guys, has been getting clobbered here over the past couple of weeks, as is expected, because when the markets are rallying, hitting highs, you know, the VIX tends to do pretty poorly, as you guys can see. You know, the VIX went from 36 all the way down to 11, um, you know, from the beginning of 2019 to the month of April when that market, when the markets in general were on this big rally. And now that the rally is really just continuing, we're hitting all time highs again. The VIX is continuing to get um, clobbered here. So let me know down below in the comment section what do you guys think about the markets right now? I would love to know your opinion as always. And without further ado, let's just talk about what I did today in terms of my trades and my trading today, guys, was very quick, very easy because all I did was sell a swing trade that I bought yesterday. And that uh, swing trade that I bought yesterday was in ticker symbol AAPL. So the whole um, you know basis of this swing trade, the whole idea behind it was entering roughly at $200 as we broke above this resistance. The whole idea was to enter as we confirmed it as a new support. And for those of you guys that watched my video yesterday, I talked about exactly when I entered. You know, we popped up briefly above 200 We pulled back, right? And we retested this level as a new support roughly at about $200. And we saw the big pop up to about 201 And I was already entered somewhere around here here, the 220 to 230 level. And from there, guys, you know, we saw the pretty big optimism pre-market today. The futures were doing quite well, and this really spiked up Apple very aggressively. And when I saw pre-market, guys, the massive run was at 202 right before the market was about to open. And then when we got that big green candle this morning, you know, I was like, okay. And especially once we start to get into 203, I was up like 1.2% on my position at that point. I was like, okay, this is a very quick move. It was overnight, right? I'm taking my profits. And that's what I ended up doing, guys. So from about 230, uh, let's say 200.30, ended up getting out at about 203-ish, 203.1. You can see that's about a 1.3 to 1.4% profit on an overnight swing trade, which makes me really happy. I'm ecstatic with that. I'm content with that. And that's all I ended up doing, guys. I, you know, there were other stocks, there were other ETFs that did quite well today, but I missed out on those. I didn't really take any positions on those. I was just simply watching the markets, you know, after I ended up selling out of my Apple position. So let me know, how did you guys end up doing today? What do you think about tech? What do you think about Apple? You know, what, what do you think the markets are going to do? Honestly, I would love to know everything that you guys are thinking down below in the comment section. Let me know, guys. I love talking to you all. So that's it really for today's trading update. And honestly, for the rest of this week, I'm going to be watching how the market reacts. You know, are we going to continue to rally, which I personally think is very, very likely, very, very possible here. And if the market continues to rally, I think Apple can also be a potential trade, uh, you know, in, 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 to get into tomorrow, right? We can see there is a lot of room left to run on Apple up to 210. You may be asking yourself, why didn't you just hold it? then, right? Because honestly, I just wanted to lock in the very quick profit. That's the truth, guys. And there's never a bad, it's never a bad idea to just lock in your profits, right? That's my personal belief. I stick to my plan, right? If I'm 1.5% in the green and I'm very comfortable with that and it's short term, why not just take the profit, wait for a better entry point? So at this point, you know, let's say we end up, you know, getting capped at that 205 resistance on Apple. Maybe we pull back a bit. Maybe we retest 201 maybe we retest 202 that could be another entry point on apple or let's say we break above 205 we pull back and we hold 205 as a new support that could be a nice fill from 205 up to 210 these are a couple scenarios that i'm waiting for on apple that could potentially um play out here we saw crude oil this morning went on a ridiculous move it filled that gap completely this really just happened overnight so i wasn't really able to capitalize on it 
and that's the one thing that kind of sucks um, trading these inverse ETFs that trade on futures. A lot of the time, if you don't hold the future overnight, or rather the ETF overnight, you can miss out because a lot of the time these futures make their moves overnight. So example here, you know, crude oil yesterday it closed, I believe, at like $58 towards the close of the market. And let's say you were to buy UWT, you would have made all of your money overnight if you were to buy UWT. That goes up whenever crude oil is going up, right? You would have made... Uh, a whopping 11% today, which is absolutely crazy, right? And if we go to crude oil very quickly so I can show you guys that it made that move overnight, take a look here. One day, one minute. Let's see, guys. You can clearly see it, right? Take a look at this time period. This morning, 7.10, which is July 10th, 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I was sleeping at this point, right? You know, 58.70, we, we ran up all the way from 58.70 to about 59.50 when the market opened. So that move, that UWT move, was pretty much made overnight. And again, that sucks when that ends up happening. It's ideal if that happens during the market so you can capitalize on it without taking that massive risk of holding an inverse ETF, a leveraged ETF overnight. But you win some, you lose some, guys, and you miss out on some. That's just the reality of trading, right? That's just the reality of things here. So now, at this point, guys, it's a bit tricky, right? Because the RSI is overbought. We're at a resistance right now. At this point, I would love to see it break 60 and hold 60 as a new support. See that RSI get to a healthy spot and maybe fill up to 63, but that might be too big of a move and too short of a time for crude oil, so I don't really know, guys, at this point. I'm just going to be watching it. I think the move has already been made there. No sense of chasing it, but natural gas at this point this one's looking very, very good. We're breaking out of the 180 SMA. We're holding that 180 SMA. We held it as a support. We're breaking out of this downwards channel that we were talking about in yesterday's video and that I have illustrated here on the chart. Very, very bullish here, guys. We broke out. You know, everything is looking pretty good right now for natural gas and for you guys. And the thing here also that's looking pretty solid, guys, is that we're inching above the next resistance spot, which is about 248. Well, at this point, we're still a bit under it, but we were inching above it, um, you know, at this point in time, kind of at this point, right? It's actually more towards not 248. I guess you could say it's more at like 245, literally exactly where we are right now. So this is a level where, you know, if we pop out of it, we could be filling up the next gap to about maybe 254, maybe 255. So that could be the next move on um, natural gas. And if that does end up happening, guys, you know, you gas, which goes up whenever natural gas is going up, that is going to be the play that I'm personally watching. And at this point, guys, you gas is actually at a pretty healthy dip buy. So hopefully natural gas doesn't make the move overnight so we can capitalize on this tomorrow, maybe pre-market hours heading into the open of the market because if we're dipped uh we dip we're dipped now down to about 19 bucks high at about 20 that's about a six percent margin of profit there if you guys is able to bounce and fill up to about 20 bucks so i'm watching that very closely here amzn Amazon really played out exactly to how I ended up uh, calling it out on Sunday's video. But the sad thing is, guys, I didn't even play Amazon. I played Apple. But again, you don't, you can't play all of them. You miss some, you lose some, you 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 win some. That's just how it goes, right? But all I'm saying is that it went according to plan. Although I did not end up trading it. Remember how I was talking about if it broke 1950, it could fill the gap up to 2020, and now maybe to the next uh, high, which is at about 2050. You know, these are things that ended up happening on Amazon, but now it's a bit overbought. We may be pulling back. Who knows here, guys, but I think the boat has sailed right now on Amazon, and this, if you're hopping in right now, you may be um, suffering a case of FOMO, fear of missing out, guys. So let's take a look very quickly at some stocks that have just been going crazy, and that 
So those stocks have been the semi stocks, guys. MU in particular, oh my goodness, guys. My long term portfolio is thanking me now because MU, I've been down on this position for I don't even know how long at this point, probably like a year. I bought in in the 50s and you guys saw what happened. It went all the way down to $28. I was down quite a bit and now we're finally starting to get some of the money back, although I am still red. I'm viewing this as a a longer term position so it's not really bothering me but I think it's worth um, taking a look at for potential um, trades right now. Obviously, we're a bit overbought here. If we pull back, that would be ideal. Retest that 50 SMA. That is what I'm watching here on MU. You know, AMD, very similar, right? We're actually killing it on AMD right now. You know, it's, um, uh, you know, we bounced off that 180 SMA at 29 bucks. We broke that downwards trending, um, you know, uh, resistance here. Very good breakout. But at this point, again, just like MU, it's a bit overbought. Ideally, I would like to see a pullback and a retest at the 50 SMA. That could be a potential entry. So those are just a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching right now, guys. Let me know down below in the comment section. What do you think about them? What are you watching? What are your thoughts on the market? Again, I would love to know. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. If you want to be further connected with our community, the two links, the uh, Strive Smart Discord, the Strive Smart Facebook are linked down below. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, that is linked down below as well. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out. What is going on, everybody? Estas here. Welcome back to another video. 